all the praise. We bless you. We thank you. Faithful God, we give you praise. Let's bless him because our lives will be changed in a mighty way tonight. Hallelujah. Can you lay hands on your neighbor's back and just pray for him? In a minute or two and just prophesy and say in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for my neighbor. Go ahead and prophesy. Say, Lord, his story must change. Something about his life and destiny must change. Come on, agree. Agree. Pray for him. Lord, these prophecies will come to pass. Let there be a breaking, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Christ. Let there be a release. I intercede for my neighbor. He came to be blessed. Blessed you will be tonight. Hallelujah. Now lay hands on yourself and begin to prophesy. There is reception. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God is not unfruitful in my life. Pray. The word of God is not barren in my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am good ground. I am good ground. I am good ground. I am good ground in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I rejoice in my spirit because somebody's life must change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am very happy in my spirit. Give a man fish and he will return back. Begging helplessly. But teach him how to fish and you have empowered him. People go ask you, say, Now wait till they make you rich. rejoicing for nothing you're not rejoicing for nothing in the name of Jesus Christ Lord we look up to you again you're the one who has given us wisdom light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes and let me that should be the prayer tonight. The beauty that makes this heart adore the whole
So would you open my eyes and let me see? Can you just sing that part as a prayer? Open my eyes, let me see the secrets that can change men. As a prayer, would you open my eyes to let me see? One more time, sing. open my eyes to let me see. Jesus, open our eyes. We can see nothing until you open our eyes. Let tonight, oh God, bring a financial revolution in someone's life. Finally, may someone get this key tonight, oh God, I pray. Open my eyes and let me see. Open my eyes and let me see. Proverbs 22, verse 2. I'd like you to just keep standing. Just turn to it. Prepare for an experience tonight. I will show you a key by the Spirit. I promise you it will change your life. Proverbs 22, verse 2. Are you there? Read it as loud as you can. One, two, read. One more time. The Bible says, Scripture itself identifies that speaking about wealth, although in the same earth, there are two kinds of people. It doesn't leave us to confusion. It says the rich and the poor, they meet together. God is the maker of them all, but he's not the maker of them so. He created them. They separated themselves into levels. It says the rich and the poor, by whatever means, in the same earth, but they created that difference. God is the maker of them all. He created them as his blessed creation. But they made themselves either rich or poor. One more scripture. Keep standing. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 9. Just the A part. Never forget this scripture for as long as you live. I want to prove to you that God never made any man rich or poor. They made themselves so. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 9. Ready? This is an appetizer for tonight. One to read. Just stop there. One more time. The profit of the earth is for who? A certain tribe? A certain race? It says, moreover, God left the profit of the earth and said, whoever finds the key, take it. Moreover, the profit of the earth is for all. No tribalism, no racism, no gender inequality. The profit of the earth. The Bible says even the king is served by the field. Open my eyes and let me see. Would you open my eyes and let me see. Hallelujah. I'd like you to walk up to 20 people, give them a hug and a congratulations in advance. Tell them your status is changing. No, no, this is for real. Your status is changing. Knowledge, revelation, light.
Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise and please sit down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, let's get to the business of the night. There is a lot to do. We're on our way to better days. 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 Sing to yourself just this one time. My status is changing. There's no more Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our series was interrupted last week, but we're back. To start with tonight, please, I want you to pay attention. Write. You cannot commit so important a thing just to your mind alone. As much as possible, write. The teachings will be free as always. And you can get it. Poverty must give up on your life once and for all. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will sign out of that realm forever, never to return, under no circumstance. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, when we started off, we talked about a few things. By the way, please and please, I want you to get our teaching on financial dominion. It's a four-part series. It's the foundational teaching on kingdom wealth and prosperity. I told us we're not going back into those things, tithing the spiritual laws and so on and so forth. It's going to be counterproductive if we go back. The teachings are there. I think we did justice. Get it and listen to it very, very well because um, we're moving on another paradigm in this series. Praise the Lord. Let me just do a quick recap. I want us to cover as much as, as much as we can. Hallelujah. We talked about um, how that is the desire of God for us to prosper. Psalm 35 verse 27. It tells us that God has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So God has pleasure in our prosperity. And then the Bible tells us in Psalm 112, verse 1 and 3, that blessed is the man that fears God, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. You know, wealth and riches shall be in his house. Hallelujah. We define financial prosperity as freedom from poverty, lack, and the negative effects that come with them. I'm just doing a quick recap. Um, and we saw how that some of the negative effects that come with being poor includes fear, insecurity, greed, self-centeredness, unrighteousness. And um, we also define prosperity as having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish, multiply, and sustain its availability. We define poverty as a perpetual state of lack and insufficiency of financial resources, often characterized by lack of productivity. Hallelujah. And um, we established the fact that the church has greatly suffered in this area largely because um, there have been incomplete teachings about prosperity. 
either an emphasis on the spiritual side to tithe and give and, and expect blessings or people have gone to the other side into materialism and carnality and this lust for money. Both of them are wrong. Hallelujah. I told us how that many pastors do not have financial literacy and how that the church is also an institution. An institution is a platform for the transference of knowledge. There are many well-meaning pastors. They are anointed. They love the Lord. They are born again. They are very sincere people. They love the sheep of God, but they lack financial literacy. So when it comes, they either do not touch on that subject and leave people to just guess whatever they feel about finances or they touch it but they limit it to what they know and usually it's just tithing and offering and they stop there and so the the general teaching to the congregation is tight and give and then expect blessings and there are so many people in the body of christ favor comes but lack of financial literacy and the formula for wealth keeps driving it out of their lives right and I told us that many preachers do not even know why they are wealthy. They think they are wealthy because they are preaching the gospel. That's not true. You will know at the end of the teaching tonight. Praise the Lord. And so we seek to, in this series, go direct straight to the point. That's why I'm not even talking about tithing and giving and all of that. We have been able to touch that. I want to believe that the average committed person in this place already has this foundational knowledge about tithing as the key that opens the heavens and so on and so forth i want to teach us something that anyone can use and be rich not just a preacher the gospel of prosperity we are teaching in nigeria will only make a preacher rich if you are not a preacher you will not be rich from it what i want to teach you will make anyone i don't care what the situation is hallelujah praise the lord and so we considered a few things um, why so many people are poor in the last um, discussion that we had we said how that they have not decided to be wealthy they do not have a goal to be wealthy a clear goal lack of understanding the real formula for wealth and abundance and then most importantly lack of the mental transition and I think the media department did justice on that reminding us all through the week Never forget this, that the biggest difference between the rich and the poor is not the money in their pocket. The money in your pocket is a receipt for having a healthy mindset or otherwise. This money, the Naira, is only a physical expression. Praise the Lord. Just a physical expression. Finance, can I have some money? Help me so that some people will wake up now there are some of you who will never understand this teaching until you see real money just any amount just something to hold and then we considered the myths and the mindsets that keep people poor i taught us how that there are mentalities there are there are sayings there are cliches that have been accepted in our society that keep people poor number one is that i'm just doing a quick recap number one is that money and abundance is carnal evil or unnecessary praise the lord there have been this illusion this this teaching okay thank you very much there have been this teaching this illusion that money and abundance is carnal please don't let anyone fool you money is very important say it one more time if you ever trivialize the importance of money in your life you will pay for it dearly by the grace of god i love you too much to lie to you and to spiritualize out the importance of money finance is very important to the quality of your life to your assignment and to the advancement of the kingdom Say one more time, money is very important. The Bible never says money is the root of evil. It says the love of money. And the word there is eros, lust for money. The kind of ungodly passion to seek money that will take you to hell. That's what the Bible says is evil. It never said money is the root of all evil. 
Hallelujah. Myth number two. If God really wants me rich, he will make me rich. Another wrong mindset. So many people justify their poverty as being the will of God. And sadly, many of our elder ones, our lovely parents, lovely fathers and mothers, most of them, their generation grew with that illusion of the exclusive sovereignty of God. The meaning of that is God is sovereign. He does whatever he wants. Human beings have no contribution to the outcome of their destiny. So we have agreed and most of our parents transferred that mindset to us. Praise the Lord. Wrong mindset. If God really wants me rich, he will make me rich. If God wants you to bath, he will bath you. If God wants you to go to school, he will take you to school. No, no, no. We, we have common sense in every other area except finances. When you are hungry, God does not open the fridge for you. He grants you life and energy. And you take advantage of that energy and you go and open your fridge and feed yourself. Right? Understand this. At every point in your Christian journey, there will always be a role you have to play in determining the outcome of your destiny. Bishop Oyedeko said, every Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. There will always be a part to play if you be willing and obedient. If there is good in the land, but if you are willing and obedient. Hallelujah. So that's the second myth. Myth number three, which has brought a lot of deception to the body of Christ, is that tithing is the one and only key to abundance. How many sincere preachers, godly preachers, lovely, wonderful, God-fearing preachers have misled millions of people in Nigeria into the illusion that the moment you are tithing, that is the one and only thing you need to do and everything will change automatically. I am telling you this by the word of the Lord. That's not an accurate teaching. It's a sincere teaching. But it's not true if that were true i guarantee you that 90 percent of the christians around who have been faithful titers would have had their status change radically is that true tithing is the law of open heavens it opens your heavens so that everything you do under that open heavens prospers but that's not the only key he said i will give you the keys of the kingdom not the key keys Meaning tithing and giving as powerful as they are. They are the keys that release the treasures from the realm of the spirit. But we must sustain the technology and the formula to make it manifest here and now in our lives. Say amen. Myth number four. That's the one you find around so many people in our society today. And I believe some of us were shocked. I, I remember one person talking to me, I think over last week or so, and he said he was surprised when I mentioned this. If I can just have a business idea and capital, I will be rich. It's a lie. Tell your neighbor it's not true. Turn to your neighbor and say it's not true. Many of us think the reason... <laughs> see many people still laughing. They are still reminiscing on the seriousness of what I said. It's as serious as what I'm saying now. All I need is 20,000. And I have that um, small shop. Or I have my fura or yogurt, my stand. Or I have whatever it is. So many people believe that this is all they need. Give me this. Plus the business idea I have. And I am rich. I can, I can bet you with my life. I can bet you with my life that you will not be rich that way. You will enjoy money for a few weeks or months or highest a year and crash back to where you were. I have tried this too many times with people. Too many times. Businessman, sit down quietly this night and listen. 
There are so many people moving around. I'm a businessman. I'm a businessman. What do you really need? Capital. Oh God, it's not capital. No, sir. No, sir. I prove you wrong a thousand times. It's not capital. I'm not daft. I know what I'm saying. It's not capital. Because your physical environment will always be a reflection of your mindset. Give a poor man money. How many who want to be a millionaire have you had in Nigeria that got the one million and were able to still remain millionaires after one year? Have you not heard of people who won lotteries? Ten million dollars. One million dollars. Hundred thousand dollars. They laugh about it. How many people have won cars and from Gulda, uh, Maltina, Indomie, they stand on your television screen and they snap them with the money. Few months later, their mindset has eaten everything in their physical reality. Because until the adjustment takes place here, nothing you do physically will supplement for a wrong mindset. Are we blessed? So the biggest difference between the rich and the poor is their mindset. The biggest difference this is a receipt if I buy this um, this gadget they will give me a receipt the receipt is a sign that I have bought it not a sign that I will buy it it's a sign that I bought it look at me this that I'm holding if it comes into your life is only a receipt it's not the reason why you are rich. It's the proof that you are rich. Are you getting me now? Physical cash coming into your hands is not the reason why you are rich. This is the receipt that you are rich. Is God speaking to us? So if this has not come into your life, then it is a sign that you are not rich. You see that? The rich are not those who have this. They necessarily had to have it because they are rich. Praise the Lord. So we discuss that very quickly. And then, number five, the myth we considered was entitlement mentality. Remember? The feeling that someone is responsible for your success and prosperity. I said it was, many of us are angry with our parents, we are angry with our bosses in office, we are angry with our uncles and aunties, angry with the rich people in our family because we think that they are supposed to bless us because they are rich. And we are offended, we are bitter against them and their loved ones. It's an entitlement mentality. It's one of the greatest killers of wealth potentials in Africa. So the moment you become rich, everybody in your family is leeching onto you, hoping that you will meet their needs. There are some people even angry, cursing you. It will never be well with you. You saw my rent expire and you didn't come to pay it. Entitlement mentality. That mentality that transfers the responsibility of your financial destiny to someone else to pay the price for you and then you receive the result. I told us last week that how many poor people go to meet rich people for help? Sir, my rent has expired. How much is the rent? 250000 or 300000 or 500000 or whatever it is. And then the rich man counts the money and gives the poor man and he never sits down to say, Uncle, by the way, I'm tired of coming to beg you. Is there something you will do to teach me? They will never say that. What will they say? Thank you. And they will go back and carry their stumbling block of poverty and return after one year asking the same thing again. They will come back and find out that within that one year, the uncle has built another house. They knock the house and they say, your uncle does not live here again. We are his tenants. And you go back to his house. His status has changed a thousand times and nothing has changed in the life of the same person. Praise the Lord. Is God helping us? So that very wrong mentality. And then we, we started, we stopped at how to be wealthy. I was teaching us directly, straight to the point without ambiguity. How do you become rich? Number one, 
you must decide to be wealthy. I told us that. Many people do not decide to be wealthy. They hate poverty. They wish to be prosperous. But they never decide to be wealthy. The difference between a wish and a decision is that The difference between a wish and a decision is that a wish a wish is just a desire. Just a general desire over something. A wish is a general desire. Are you getting my point now? But a decision is a strong desire. Thank you. A strong desire that is backed up by the willingness to pay the price and take responsibility. The responsibility that will produce that outcome. Are you getting the point now? So many people have not decided to be rich. They hate poverty. They are angry about it. They admire wealthy people. They wish, they sit down and keep their dreaming. But they have not decided. Say, I decide to be rich. Say, I decide to be wealthy. No, no, no. It's not carnal. Say it from with every sense of spirituality and seriousness. I decide to be rich. Hallelujah. It's not enough to say, I hate poverty. How many people have said it? The more they say it, the closer it comes to them. Because that's not the key to exiting it out. Decision. Decision. Time does not change things. Time only reveals the true state of things. Only decisions change things. So if your level financially and that of your loved ones is going to change, don't wait for time. One day, go better is an illusion. It is your decision that will change it. Say amen. So decide to be wealthy and you must make your decision a goal. What is a goal? A goal is a desire. That you have set as a project. You are ready to channel all your energy and your time to achieving it. Very important. If you do not set goals, you don't set a financial goal to be wealthy, you will never be rich. You will dream about it. You will see yourself in a dream rich. You will see yourself driving cars in a dream. You will see yourself building houses. It will never happen in your lifetime. It will stop in the realm of dreams there. How many people have dreamt of so many things they get up in the morning laughing and happy what happened they say my life must change what happened i had a dream in the dream i saw myself counting dollars i saw myself counting pounds in the dream i saw myself building a house for my father it will remain as a dream until you set it as a goal a goal enough to pursue it hallelujah and then the second the second key on how to be wealthy is that there is an exact formula for wealth and abundance. I jumped that and that's what we're going to discuss today. And then number three, under how to be wealthy, I taught us the mental transitions that bring wealth. Remember? I told us that people are categorized into three. Please listen, follow very closely everywhere inside and outside. I told us there are three kinds of people. Remember? As far as the distribution of wealth and mindset is concerned. Number one, are people who have poverty mentality or poor mindset and naturally their poor physical reality. So their mindset and their physical realities are the same. Are we following please? Are you getting me? So here we have um, person A. His mindset is poor. His physical reality is poor. Number two, we have someone who has transited mentally. So he has a wealthy mentality, but his physical reality is still poor. Are we there? And then number three, the wealthy place now. We have someone whose mentality is the wealth mentality and his physical environment has now become his mindset. And I told us that every one of us can find our financial positions in these three illustrations. Most of us, really, most of us have poor physical realities by poor, I don't mean you are begging for food. But there is that state of perpetual insufficiency. Where people think about money. They worry about money. Look at pastors. Every service is money, 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 money. 
you can settle the issue of finance and face more important issues finance is not the most important issue so it's better to handle it once and then you can do some other things very important so here we have the guy who has a poor mentality and his physical environment he thinks the reason why he's poor is because he was born from a, a poor family that may have some elements of truth but that may not be the reason why he's currently poor give this person money something in his mindset will reduce him back please are you following my example say amen and then when he begins to transit mentally right we'll discuss that now this guy begins to get the mindset of the rich and all of a sudden this environment starts pushing him away something in this environment starts pushing him because his mindset is changing now at this point level two he has the mindset of the rich but his physical condition is still of the poor and i told you this is the most frustrating level in a man's life because when you talk to a rich man he's impressed with your mindset but then your physical reality is still like a poor man so it's like you are in between the wealthy place and the place of poverty but if you continue and you do what i'm about to show you shortly you will move inevitably no power in existence i tell you will stop you from stepping into the wealthy place there is a place called the wealthy place thou has caused men to ride over our heads we walk through water and through fire but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place hallelujah so let's start off tonight's teaching thank you jesus i'll start tonight By examining the mindset of the rich versus the mindset of the poor. Write it very quickly. If you like, you can create a column into two. You can write one rich, the other one poor. Let's see how the rich think. Let's go into their minds and see how wealthy people think. Since we have established the fact that the prosperity of any man is not just from the physical money that comes. But the quality of his mental transition there is a way that the wealthy think there is a way that the rich think that brings financial resources to them and there is a way that the poor think are you ready now so we're going to be contrasting and most of us are going to be seeing ourselves we'll be seeing the mindsets that we have had that we have preserved that have been responsible for the poverty in our lives and the goal is that as i teach you begin to switch switch in your mind the moment you see yourself in that category of the poor, you must begin to have a determination to change. Praise the Lord. You make all things new, yes. You make all things new and I will follow you forward. That's what it's doing in our minds right now. You all things new yes you make all things new and i will follow you forward the first difference between the rich and the poor is that the rich believe in taking responsibility for the outcome of their lives while the poor believe in luck and chance so write it under the category of the rich right that the rich believe in taking responsibility for the outcome of their lives they believe that they have a role to play in their wealth and financial abundance every wealthy man justly wealthy not crooks not corrupt people everyone justly wealthy especially in the kingdom they believe that they, there is a participation from their own end to determine the outcome of their lives if they are to get into the wealthy place they believe that they believe in taking responsibility over their financial destiny still the same point while the poor believe in luck and chance are you seeing i'm contrasting the mindsets now the poor believe in luck they believe in chance they believe in modern nature they hope that one day something will change they love that saying we are poor because god wants it that way right they are the ones who teach 
Oh God, give them so that through them we will get. It's a devilish mentality. Don't ever use that kind of word again. You are cursing yourself and cursing your destiny. You disqualify yourself from receiving the blessings of the kingdom. Say amen. So mindset number one, the rich believe in taking responsibility. Say after me, in the name of Jesus, I take responsibility for the outcome of my finances. In the name of Jesus, I take responsibility for my financial destiny. Say in the name of Jesus, I stop blaming parents. I stop blaming friends. I stop blaming circumstances. I take full responsibility for the outcome of my financial destiny. The moment you get to that point, you are beginning to be like the rich. My brother did not give me the hundred thousand. Otherwise, I would have bought more goods. And then my shop would have expanded. You are a liar. That's not the reason. Leave your brother alone and leave him in peace. He may have done you bad, but that's not the reason. The poor love passing responsibility. They love it when they say no, it's because of government. No, that's not the reason. The flaw of government revealed a flaw in you that had been there. See that? Number two. The rich are very disciplined and patient people. Underline the word discipline and patience. The rich are very disciplined and patient people. While the poor are very indisciplined and very impatient. Financially speaking and generally speaking. The poor are so careless. Careless over their financial resources. They are not disciplined. Most people think the rich are the ones who do get rich quick things. No, no. The poor are the ones who always want sharp, sharp money. They always want all kinds of things. Every wealthy man understands the place of discipline and patience. Hallelujah. It's a wealthy man that will be worth 10 million naira and he will still be taking back because he's trying to build his wealth. A wealthy man will be 10 million naira worth yet he's staying in one small room because he's building. A poor man, if he gets 100 or 1 million naira, he will rent a house of 600,000, buy a suit of 100,000, and die with the remaining 400,000. Very impatient people. And there is a pressure, listen, especially for us, the young people, there is so much pressure in our generation to prove that you are making it. Right? The moment someone graduates, everybody is saying, so how far, how far, how far, what is happening? And then we try to look for all kinds of ways. You kill yourself and buy a suit of 100,000 and that's all your savings home and abroad. You buy a watch of 25,000, buy a shoe of 30,000 and where you stand, the people you are talking to are so poor, they don't even know the difference between a watch of 2,000 and a watch of 25,000. So the effort to impress them has been wasted. Hallelujah. The rich are very disciplined people. Very disciplined. They don't waste money. Go to the restaurant and see the way the poor eat. You will be shocked. You will think they just won a lottery. Madam, eat there? Yes. And you say, bring it. And they, they eat carelessly and foolishly and they spend all the money. When their friends come in, guy, how far now I sit down, sit down, don't worry, don't worry, I will arrange things for you. This is a poor man. Look at what he's doing. This, that one is not just giving. It's called financial carelessness. Are we learning something? And then he finds out that money is running away from him perpetually. Number three. The rich and wealthy believe in the law of process. They believe in the law of process. They know that it takes time to build wealth. Wealth, true wealth and prosperity is a function of time. The rich believe in the law of process. The poor always want results without process. That's why they get into all kinds of things. 
That's why they are deceived and swindled around. They get into all kinds of things because they are poor. They, from the mind. Not from their business. From the mind. The poor like processes. With, they like results without process. So you meet somebody around the park and the person calls you. Right? Like we have many in our, in our society. We've had so many stories of those people. They call you around. They act as though they are strangers. Or they send you an email. You have just won 2 million US dollars. Or 10 million. And you are not even afraid to read the mail. You open it and smile. And they write there. They say, don't tell anybody. And you keep quiet. You call your friend and say, ah, it's miracle service. The prayer is, it's not miracle service. You are about to get into trouble. How many people have been swindled of, of, of their hard earned money because of getting into schemings? Let me tell you, anything that does not subscribe to the law of process, run away from it. Breakthrough comes instantly, but preparation from that, for that breakthrough takes time. It is the manifestation that is instant, not the preparation. In one day, you can become a millionaire. But after a season of preparation, are you getting the point now? You don't prepare one day. No, sir. No, sir. It took Joseph one day to become a prime minister. But it took him 12 years to prepare for that position. It took Moses one day to exit uh, the people out. Just one plague overnight. But it took him 40 years at the backside of the mountain. Hallelujah. It took Jesus three days, only three days, to fulfill his assignment. He died, was buried, resurrected. In three days, the plan of salvation was over. But it took him about 30 years to prepare. So, the rich, where are we? The rich believe in the law of process. And the poor jump process. Right? They jump a lot of process. They want result. Sharp, sharp. Someone just comes with a phone and say, Guy, buy this phone now and you will sell it. You didn't ask him where he got the money. The person who is trying to sell the phone to you is looking like an arm robber. And most likely he is. And you are there because you want it sharp, sharp. May the Lord deliver us from this sharp, sharp mentality in the name of Jesus Christ. Never be under pressure to prove to people that I want to make it sharp sharp. You want to start a shop in one day. And you want to have 100 customers in one day. You want to start a restaurant in one day. And you want to be the leading. That's what has led men of God to witchcraft. They start a church and in one year, they want 5,000 members. In one year, the man wants protocol. In one year, he wants to go on air. In one year, he wants to have the best of sound. The best of church activity. So he will have to go and, and bow down to some godless things how many people are in occults today many of our parents have joined fraternities and occults because they want sharp sharp money they join all kinds of clubs and societies that don't make sense they initiate them into godless things the rich and the wealthy the truly rich and the wealthy they know that it takes time it takes time it takes time. Warren Buffett, one of the, well, the world's wealthiest man. I think he should be in his 70s or 80s right now. A billionaire. Over 70 billion dollars worth or thereabout. He started, he knew what I'm teaching you now. As early as age 8. But it took him at least 4 or 5 decades. Are you seeing that? The path to wealth can be accelerated but not rushed. You can accelerate it. God is the God of speed not rush. He gives men speed but he does not rush men. Tarry in Jerusalem. As desperate as I want the gospel of the kingdom to reach the earth. Tarry in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power. Say I receive grace. To follow the due process that brings lasting wealth. Say it one more time. 
I receive the grace to follow the due process. Hallelujah. Number four now. The rich always plan and set goals. The rich always plan and set goals. While the poor are always impulsive and reactive. Always impulsive. The rich always plan. If they want to build, they settle down. Like the Bible says, they count the cost. How much will it take us to build? Okay, it will take 7 million. How much do we have now? 200,000. It's nothing compared to what we want. What can 200,000 do right now? 200,000 can buy at least, we can buy four bags of cement and a few sharp sand. Come and pour it intimidate the devil with it put the cement there and pour the sand and go back home you are taking a step they plan but the, the the poor they behave they can go out in one day i've said it again many of our parents do that in one day they go back and come up with things they don't plan for this is how the poor let a poor man enter a boutique he just planned to go and get shoe and his budget was seven thousand but he enters a boutique and the blue light is there. Everything is shining. And they say they just brought this. I mean, they just came from Italy. This is from Dubai. This is from Turkey. This is original. Touch it, feel it. And he's looking. Carelessness is about to happen right away. Because he's about to be erratic. He's under pressure. Say about guy, you don't pass this level now. And he say, oh yeah, how much, how much? He say, oh yeah, because of you. Bring 13K. He's paying. The, the 100,000 he took there was for something. But because there's no planning, he ended up buying something that was not... You bought a cloth that was not your size. You knew it was not your size, but they convinced you so much. The blue light made you to see it and you bought it. And you went home, you are angry with yourself, everybody, your friend. How about you? are a bad friend, you didn't advise me. Whereas you were there bragging, feeling like a rich man. A wealthy man is not embarrassed. To tell you no this is not this is this is beyond my budget for now i will plan and i can come back there is nothing embarrassing say how about guy you you that you are staying in a 20 million naira house it tells you that's not the issue i work based on budget that's how the rich think poor people are always under pressure they just give you pocket money or you get your salary of of 30,000 and you are going and your plan is to go quietly to a restaurant where 500 naira can feed you. Somebody comes to push you to a restaurant that is bigger than your level. And then you go there and while you are buying food, you find some other people and they say, ah, your salary is there. We will die with you here until you buy this. And you end up spending half of your money. Have you seen that happen to our parents? They collect salary and over the weekend, the money is finished. They think it's because the money is small. The man was saying that when he was a primary staff, at a managerial level, weekend is still finishing his money because of that mindset. Always plan and set goals. Always plan and set goals. Don't be impulsive. Don't just do things because you have to do them. It's okay if you need to do them at that point and the reasons are justified. Otherwise, do not be embarrassed at all. Don't get into that pressure of pushing yourself to the wall. Set goals. Set goals. If you don't need a car, don't buy it. If you need only three trousers, work with three trousers. There's no reason having hundred trousers with nothing in your pocket. You flaunt trousers around and they look as if there's something in it. And there's why not invest in your mind? Praise the Lord. I've told us again and again in this place. Stop trying to look rich. Pay the price and be rich. There's nothing honorable about trying to look rich. Pay the price and be rich. You can see a wealthy man, especially here in the north. You can see somebody who is a multi-millionaire. And he can just wear his jalabia and wear his pants and just be smiling. No pressure. He can even enter a golf to the bank. Whereas the poor man collected loan of 7 million, bought a car of 5 million, rented an apartment of 2 million and will spend the rest of his life paying that debt. 
and the poor man just enters. There's nothing and he just enters. How are you? You see him using a simple phone. Whereas somebody, you ask the person, how much is he in your, your account? 500 naira. How much phone are you using? 130 iPhone. What? Six. You just bought it. He just came out and you bought it. Nobody to communicate to because you don't have any, any collection of rich, sensible people. Who are you sending a mail to? How is the mail going to increase your work? Hallelujah. Say, I refuse to be under pressure. I set goals and I work with goals. Hallelujah. Number five, the rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones. Oh, how powerful. The rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones, while the poor see challenges as tumbling blocks and obstacles. Very powerful psychological difference between the rich and the poor. The rich, every time they see challenges, number one, they never call them problems. Rich men never say problems. They say challenges. Hallelujah. And they see challenges as a stepping stone. They see challenges as an opportunity to learn more. They see challenges as an opportunity to grow more. But poor people, Let a poor man start a business and it crashes. And you hear him regretting. It's you oh, that told me, I've, I've always hated poultry. I hate chickens. I hate poultry. They can die anyhow. And the, the rich man says, no, my own. I lost beds three times. Three sets. I lost 5,000 beds in one day. And the poor, I, I can't take that. And they remain poor. Because they are unwilling to step out of their comfort zone. The rich see challenges as opportunities look up please for a while how have you interpreted the challenges that have come in your life especially financial challenges hallelujah what is your interpretation of challenges do you see them as an opportunity to learn more to know more to access greater light or do you see them as stumbling blocks there are many people today many people today they refuse to go and get jobs because one time they got a job and they fired everybody in the company and they have seen that challenge as an obstacle and they want to avoid that embarrassment whereas somebody who was poor kept applying kept applying and now the person is working in an oil company say after me from today i see challenges as an opportunity to learn, to improve, and to grow. I change my attitude. I change my response towards challenges. Very powerful. Two people can go through the same thing. The experience will make one wiser and better and wealthier. Another, it will become the reason why he will never move forward. Hallelujah. You ask your parents, for instance, why have you not set up something now? They say, look, let me tell you, you are a small boy, that's why. In 1970, is it two or three? I can't remember exactly. I think we did something like that. And then your mother will concur. Yes, we did something like that. What did we even do? We started producing ice and nobody bought it. The ice will freeze there. They will take light. It will melt again. It will freeze there and the business packed up. And because of that, because of that, they have seen that challenge as an obstacle. They've seen it as a stumbling block. Hallelujah. Say, I refuse to see challenges as obstacles. When others are seeing obstacles, I see opportunities. Please say it. When others are seeing obstacles, I see opportunity. Your attitude Towards challenges is what will determine whether that challenge will kill you or you will rise above it. Two people can have a carryover. Two people can have carryovers. For one, he just looks and says, so this is how my life will end. So I'm truly dull. That thing they said is not a lie. I'm seeing the proof right in front of me. Whereas somebody looks and says, there's no problem. This is a challenge. 
I will come back and I will give it to life. Because of this thing, I will establish a university in the future. I'm on my way coming. I may cry right now. But I see it as an opportunity to rise. Whereas for somebody, he looks and says, if you like, call me a dollar, you are right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Two people will be um, intimidated and, and, and affected by armed robbers. Armed robbers will come into a street and rob every house. Is that good? No. But I'm saying they rob the house. They seize jewelries, seize everything. Two years after that robbery, one family has renovated their house where they broke the glass. They have improved on it. The armed robbery gave them an opportunity to renovate the house. Have you seen people like that? The door that they broke, they now brought security doors. Whereas one neighbor is still angry, using banana leaves to cover the place where they did the stealing and still angry. You see him tie it and say, everybody that comes to the house, say, come. This is where this idiot came and stole our money. Two years afterwards, he has seen that as an obstacle. Are you getting what I'm saying now? He has refused to move forward. Whereas one has used the opportunity to renovate his house. Your attitude towards challenges will determine whether you will use them as ladders or they will become a load that will destroy you. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I change my attitude towards challenges. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I change my attitude towards challenges. Someone was fired. Two people were fired. For one, it became the beginning of the tragedy of his life. Ten years after being fired, he became a miserable man. Turned into a miserable husband. Turned into a miserable father. And, and, and the list goes on and on. For someone, the moment they fired him, he said, no, the owner of this company does not have two heads. I will make up my mind. And in three years, he's already employing 100 people. Attitude. I know so many people who were fired and they went back to their boss after two or three years. They said, thank you for firing me. It was the best thing that happened to me. The giant in me was sleeping. That, that, that firing letter did something to me. I got interested in the issue of finances. When they wanted to lock us in the prison where we could not pay the sound. Right? Sometimes... <laughs> Challenges can be a gift, brothers and sisters. It will shake you. The day the landlord says, come out! And he's packing your clothes out. And you're saying, oh God, don't embarrass me. I will go. But just wait. In the night, I will run and give you your key. And he says, no way. This morning, here and now, carry your pregnant wife and your twins and go out of my house. And you are now, you are embarrassed. And you are moving with your wife, pregnant and twins. And people are saying, look at you irresponsible men. How can this man be twins and then the woman is still pregnant? Sometimes it will take you to the cave of Adulam like David and that's where you begin to sit down and say look something is wrong. I'm getting something wrong. Challenges really bring us to the place of destiny. They create defining moments in our lives but your attitude towards challenges will determine whether you will stay there. Hallelujah. It's God speaking to us. So the rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones while the poor see challenges as stumbling blocks and obstacles. Number six. Are you getting blessed? The rich have great courage and persistence. The rich have great courage and persistence whereas the poor easily give up. Poor people easily give up. They start a business, it does not work, they quit. They start building a house, it does not work, they quit. But the rich, they are courageous people. When one door closes, they force another one to open. When one strategy fails, they start another one. Wealthy people are highly courageous people. They are persistent. Very persistent. Hallelujah. You can see somebody who is rich five years after he told you in the name of jesus i'm coming out of poverty nothing has changed in his life but you come and meet him and his goal is still intact you laugh at him and say bros why are you fooling yourself just just agree that 
it's not your turn to shine. And the person will tell you, I'm still reading the book. Five years from the time he made that decision, he's still studying the books. He's still growing. He doesn't have a car yet, but he's still growing. He's still staying in the old house, but he's still growing. You knew him with that one trouser. Five years later on, he's still wearing it, but he's still growing. That's a rich man. His status will most certainly change. What have you given up on? God gave you the direction. God gave you the grace. But he never told you the road will be easy. Preachers lied to you that if you are anointed, it will be a bed of roses. Preachers lied to you that if God is with you, it will just be a walkover. Preachers lied to you that if you are anointed, you will start a business and it will be flawless because the Holy Spirit is at work in your life. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Failure is a prerequisite in the school of success. You have nothing to tell me if you have not failed in life. You have not earned the right to counsel me if you do not have a track record of failure. What you see today as your failure will become your symbol of wealth. It will become the throne that you will sit upon. Rich people have failed. You cannot imagine. You cannot imagine how many times they will start 10 businesses, all of them will fail. They will do a lot of things, it will not work. But persistence and courage. When everybody is criticizing them, they are busy working. When everybody is saying, why must you keep doing this? Eh? Someone tries to ask two ladies out. You ask the first one, she says, sorry, I'm already engaged. You ask the second one, say, no, no, no. God has already revealed my husband to me. You are not the one. After two opportunities, you will never ask a lady again to get married to. Because you sit and say, Kai, me, I, I can't, I'm not a fool. I can't be taking embarrassments like that. You will marry, oh, let me tell you in advance. If you don't take the courage to continue, ladies, shout continue. Every door cannot be closed. No, sir. One door will most certainly open. Hallelujah. Very important. Are you a courageous person? Are you persistent over your goals? Or do you just give up easily? I refuse to give up. In the name of Jesus. You're a pastor here. You, you started a walk. And it looks like nothing is happening. And you are truly called. But you are about to give up. You are a businessman about to give up. You are a family man about to give up. Refuse to give up. And I tell you at the other side of your pain. Is celebration. Like a woman. Right? When she goes in to deliver. There are times she may want to give up. And the midwives and the nurses are encouraging her. And telling her don't worry. Don't worry. Say is it like that for every woman? No it's only me. They say it's like that. Just, just give up. Don't, don't give up for instance and then they continue motivating her and finally the baby is out sometimes she may need to go through CS as painful as it is the baby still comes the Bible says do not be weary in well doing it said for we will reap in due season if you faint not but if you faint you will not reap say I refuse to faint let me give us two more and then we'll move to the formula for wealth. Hallelujah. Ready? Number seven. The rich are great risk takers. While the poor are always afraid to take risks. Wealthy people are great risk takers. They step out of their comfort zone and they walk on water. If I perish, I perish. If I fail, I will learn from it. If I succeed, let God be praised. Poor people are the easy goers. Hey, be careful, oh. Eh? You want to buy a golf and start a transport business. Somebody said, you know, the way Nigeria is, they will go and hijack your car somewhere. Have you not seen people minding their business and armed robbers entered and carried the car from the garage and went with it? The rich are great risk takers. Not foolish risk takers, but great risk takers. In 2010, when we were having the Kingdom Wealth Summit, I taught them that the spelling of faith in the world of finance is R-I-S-K. Spell it. R-I-S-K. 
when you are spelling faith in the finance world, that's how it is spelled. You must take risks. You must take risks. Not foolish risks, but you must take risks. It's a risk to marry. It's a risk to be single. It's a risk to start a building project. It's a risk to get a job. Don't you know it's a risk to transport yourself from here to Sabo every day for work? Is that not true? You can have an accident. Something can happen. God forbid, but a crisis can break out. Something can happen that can affect you. Is it not a risk? But it's a risk worth taking. When you tell somebody you want to marry him, is it not a risk? You are willing to submit to a man whose ideologies you are not exactly, you are not 100% sure of. You don't know what he can become. Yet you are willing to do that. It's a risk. Life is a risk. Not taking a risk is a bigger risk. You must take risks. This ministry is a risk. Nobody gave us a guarantee that crowds will be inside and outside. Faith is spelled R-I-S-K. When the people were setting up the sound in the morning, none of you signed an agreement that by 5 o'clock you will be here. None of you signed an agreement. But it took courage. We had to step out. Haven't prayed. Haven't fasted. We have believed God. And we are taking a risk. Miracle service is a risk. You don't know who is coming with whatever sickness. People can bring the dead. People can bring anybody. But you, you are willing to take that risk. Are you willing to take risks? Or you are part of the easy people? When I was in secondary school, there was a barbing saloon called Easy Does It. You do that for life, you will fail. Oh, just, just take it easy. Don't, don't do this. Customers didn't come today. Close your shop. It's a sign that God is not with you. Who told you it's a sign that God is not with you? It's a sign that you are growing. It's only a witch as a baby who will just get up. Imagine that a woman gives birth to a child and he just stands up. Mommy, where is the food? That's a, that's a wizard. That's, that's an illegitimate child. That's, that's, a, that's a, a breed between angels and men. That's not a pure human being. And Jesus grew. Everybody say it. Jesus, your king of kings, he grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. If Jesus grew, you must grow. Hallelujah. Lastly, number eight. The difference between the rich and the poor. The rich have a positive mental attitude. Please write, write, write it down as fast as you can. The rich have a positive mental attitude. Please pay attention to what I'm telling you. Because after this, I'm about to teach you what I call the grand formula for wealth and abundance. I give you a guarantee. I give you a guarantee that anyone that diligently follows this, even the dullest of us, if you follow what I'm giving you, you will be rich. And rich does not mean buy a car, buy a house. That's survival. The rich, write it down please, have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others. The rich have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others and never let opinions kill their dreams. The rich have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others and never let opinions kill their dreams while the poor are easily influenced. The poor have a poor esteem of themselves. The poor have a poor esteem of themselves and are easily influenced away from their dreams by the opinion of others. The poor, they fundamentally have a poor esteem of themselves. And so, when people begin to talk about them, they are easily influenced away from their dreams by the opinion of others. So many of us are here right now. So many of us are here. The opinions of people is what has stopped you from being rich. What would they say? What if I fail? Will they laugh at me? 
The other time, they saw me frying a kara and the news spread around Samaru. So what? So what about it? Have you forgotten that if you remain persistent, those who laugh at you will laugh with you? That the reason why they are laughing at you is because they are secretly intimidated by your persistence. Criticism is simply an opinion harshly expressed. It's an opinion. There are people today, Joshua Selman is to them a great man of God that they love. There are people today, Joshua Selman is a devil and a fake man of God. There are people, Joshua Selman is whatever they want to call. I learned by experience to ignore the opinion of others and to move forward. If you follow what people say about your life, they will kill you and ask others to come and see your dead body. Whether you do well, they will talk about you. Whether you do bad, they will talk about you. They are still talking about Jesus and we are still talking about Satan. Everybody in between will be talked about. So, deliver yourself tonight in the name of Jesus Christ from the influence of the opinion of others. They are spreading rumors around that I like money. Is it true? No. Mind your business. Say, see, see, I heard that you are the one that said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. What? Look, let me tell you. Trying to defend yourself is the quickest way of trying, of, of giving people an impression like what they are saying is true. They now start using wise sayings like there's no smoke without fire. There can be smoke without fire. Ask those who smoke cigarettes. Status is changing, there's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Sing it one more time. Status is changing, there's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way, I'm on my way. Let them keep talking while you produce the results. Anybody can say what he wants to say about you. Please, brothers and sisters, hear me. Don't starve yourself of sleep because of what you think people are saying. Can I tell you something? No matter what people say about you, the world is full of troubles. Very soon they will forget about your issue. Another issue will come and supersede your issue. So you can as well let the sleeping dog lie. Are you getting what I'm saying now? If a lady runs here right now and says this baby is Joshua Selman's baby, I've told people, I will only ask one question. Online, how did you get pregnant? Online, are you getting me? Not that I'll sit down and say, hey, I need to gather a committee now. My reputation is at stake. I'm a dead man already. Let the one who sent me defend him. If he's comfortable with it, fine and good. Ah, I, I will never starve myself sleep. Because he say, I called you, I called you, you didn't pick. That's how all men of God are. That's your opinion. Am I like that? No. So I go to bed. Learn to frustrate useless opinions in your life. Ah, mama, this and that is a wicked woman. Every time we come to fresh water, the way she looks at us, are you wicked? No. So mind your business. But you start running around the whole new extension telling everybody, how about you, ma, you know, am I wicked? Is it not me that gave your child school fees? No, 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 no. Save yourself all that nonsense. Rich people have a healthy mental attitude. Don't think they will not talk about you. Just like you have spoken about others. Let me assure you your turn is coming. When you see someone gossiping and talking, just pity him and nod your head. Because his own is coming. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. Yes, for sure. You have not started a church and you are criticizing every man of God. Must it be like this? Must it be like that? The day you start a church and for two months you are looking for one volunteer to be part of your ushering team. At that point, you will know it takes grace, leadership, wisdom and audacity. When you see preachers preaching 
and you see men of God standing up to concord to what they are saying, they can relate with it. Are you getting the point? When you fast and pray, the gentleman stood here to give testimony and he said it's not easy to stand here. You would think it's easy to stand here and jump around until you come and stand here. You wouldn't know whether you hold the mic with your left or right hand. I once watched some a Christian comedy show. They were doing an auditioning for comedians. These guys are supposed to be the funniest people in their various places. And they came together. And when they came together, I was just looking. I didn't laugh for one minute. They were afraid. Their jokes disappeared. Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, Until you do what somebody has done twice, don't talk about him. After two years, you mean this guy still has a small shop like this? How about God? Don't fall our hand. And then the day you open your own, that looks like looks like a restaurant, and you find out that nobody comes from morning till night. You will do bonanza 50%. Nobody will still come. At that point, you go back to that bros and say, Bros, you did try, you're well done. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I have a healthy mental attitude about myself and I refuse to let the opinion of others kill my dream. Say it. I refuse to let the opinion of others kill my dreams. They will talk about you. They will laugh. They will scorn you. It's a sign you are making progress. May your life not be so boring that your critics ignore you. May your life be the news in their secret place. That every time they are talking, they say, My God, they are trying to criticize you, but they are announcing you by extension. So many people came for Koinonia as a result of criticism. They came to find out what is all this. How can a young man be so anointed? And when they came, some of them from outside, their headache disappeared when they crossed in and they sat down. At the end of that meeting, they have brought more than 50 people to Koinonia. Criticism can be a great tool of publicity. Don't stop yourself from shining. Is God speaking to us? Ladies and gentlemen, I bring before you right now the grand formula for wealth and abundance. Pray in tongues for one minute. Your life is about to change right now. Please pray inside and outside, wherever you are. In one minute, I'd like you to pray. Hallelujah. The day I found this key, I shouted. I not Oyedepo's, I will never be poor. My own. I shouted. Shouted. Where is the document? Let me sign out of poverty forever and ever till Jesus returns. Ready? Write this down. The formula for wealth and abundance. I told you there is an exact formula. There is an exact formula. Ready? Write this down. The amount of money we receive. The amount of money we receive. Open bracket. Your wealth or your income. Your wealth or your income. The amount of money we receive. Will always. Write always in capital letter will always be in exact proportion the amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to then write colon number one there are three things i'm about to tell you now the amount of money we receive your wealth your income will always this is a law be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do the amount of money you receive 
will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do put in bracket the product or the service you offer the demand underline the word demand the demand for what you do number two your ability open bracket your skill expertise proficiency and then you can close it your ability to do what you do your ability to do what you do and number three the difficulty in replacing you the amount of money listen listen the amount of money we receive this is a law please listen I'm giving you a key that will set you free forever. The amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to number one, the demand for what you do. Number two, your ability to do it. And number three, the difficulty in replacing you. Look at what you just wrote. The demand for what you do. Your ability to do what you do. And the extent to which it is difficult to find another replacement to you. This is the grand key. The irrefutable law. When you break prosperity to its unit. The atom of prosperity is this. The amount of money Joshua Selman will ever receive in his life is proportional to the demand for what I do. My ability to do what I do and the difficulty in replacing me. The difficulty in getting another alternative to me. Let's take it one by one. Number one, the demand for what you do. This is the formula for wealth, brothers and sisters. I searched and I found it. Every millionaire I studied, every billionaire I studied, every wealthy family, every wealthy church, every wealthy business subscribe to this formula. The amount of money where you are sitting right now looking at me, the amount of money that will come into your life will be in exact proportion of the demand for what you do, your ability to do what you do, and the difficulty in replacing you. Write this down. Never try to provide a service where there is no notable demand for it. Never try to provide a service where there is no demand for it. This is what makes a lot of people fail financially. You are answering a question nobody is asking. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Look at this. Look at this. If, if this is my business, for instance, the level to which I will succeed in this business is first if there is a demand for this. Is that true? If there is no demand for this, who will pay you for it? Nobody. So many people are starting companies and corporations without asking whether there is a notable demand for what you are trying to provide. The first key to wealth is to realize that you are only paid for something when there is a demand for it. If there are no children in a place, why will you sell pampas? There is no demand for it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Never try to start a business 
when you want to get a job, trust God to get a job in a place, a corporation, a firm, where there is a demand for their service. Nitel in Nigeria is almost packed out because technology diminished the demand for their service. Are you seeing that now? When there was a demand, what happened? They were rich. They had money. Are you getting what I'm saying? Typewriters. Those who sell typewriters today, if they did not change, will they be rich? Because there is no more demand. Never try to provide any service when there is no demand. This is the reason why ministers have their churches full. Because there is a demand for what they are giving. They think they are rich because they are preaching the gospel. Hear me, Koinonia. This crowd, inside and outside, is here tonight because there is a demand. Are you getting what I'm saying? This ministry is excelling, not just because God called us. God called us, yes, but we are responding to a demand. For as long as there is a demand for my anointing, I remain relevant. For as long as there is a demand for the dimensions of the realities of the kingdom that I teach, they will continue to be relevant. The amount of money we receive will be in exact proportion, not to what you do, the demand for it. You started a business, you never found out whether there was a demand for it. That's why when wealthy people are about to come to Africa and start businesses, the first thing they do is they send envoys, representatives, to come and give them statistics. They are testing the waters to see if there will be a demand. They will never come to Africa until they find out that there is a demand to the size to which even if they fail, they will still succeed. That's how the wealthy think. Is God speaking to us? Write this down. Continue the points that you wrote at first. You either create a demand first. When you want to provide any kind of service, spiritual, financial, educational, whatever, you must either create a demand for it first. Open bracket. Through exposure, orientation, and advertisement. You either create a demand for it or satisfy an existing demand. Look up, please. Okay, write, write it down and look up. You either create a demand for what you want to offer. That means make people want it or see that they already want it by default and supply it. Let me tell you something. Look up. This is the key behind the wealth of Igbo people. I'm not being biased. An Igbo man will never supply anything he has not ascertained a demand for. That's the reason why when others are running away somewhere, he knows there will be a demand for that thing and then he will go there. Unconsciously, unconsciously, many people do not know this is the law that they are fulfilling. Asad, Asad, when did phones come into Nigeria? It depends on which one you're talking about. Generally, Nitel had one thing like that, what our protocol used now, right? That's how it started. Now, watch this. Did you know that until phones came in terms, I mean, our wireless mobile communication now, until phones came, we, we had that one that you dial, right? You touch it, and then it goes back. You continue, and then it goes back. 73142, and then your state code. You, you remember that, right? Watch this. Some people sat down at the cutting edge of technology and they said, no, we have something to offer. And this is what they said. These people do not know about that possibility. So we use advertisement to create a demand. When they brought out Indomie in Nigeria, what happened? They use advertisement and you are watching. They show a beautiful lady and she picks up the, the Indomie. And she's taking it and you are just celebrating. What they are doing is they are creating a demand. Immediately after that, you say, eh, please, go and buy me um, this and that and that. They create a demand for it. Or they meet an existing demand. Write this down. 
always respond to demands and you will be rich. Respond to demands. I think it was the last school of ministry students. I was teaching them on finance in school of ministry. And I told them, if I'm to do business in a crusade ground, I won't sell pure water. If I'm to do business in a crusade ground, I will do mobile toilets. Is there a demand for it? You are joking. You are joking. Sooner or later, no matter how bold you stand, you are in a crusade ground from 3 p.m. in the afternoon for a night vigil. Abba, you will need to ease yourself. And I won't be there. You will even know it's my own. But you just see me smiling. The goodness of God. As they are worshipping, I will lift my hands. Because the amount of money that comes to me is dependent on the demand. So I look for the demand. What are they looking for so desperately that they will be willing to do anything? May God help you that you are not purging on that crusade ground. You will demand my service a thousand times. And that's good for me. That's exactly the kind of atmosphere I want. As far as my business is concerned. It may look messy, but forget the money is not dirty. You don't defecate on the money. Right? Are you learning something tonight? When a demand for a value or service becomes overwhelming, I want to give you a secret, a big secret right now. Many of you will not imagine how much you would have paid for if you were in a business class. When a demand for a value or service becomes overwhelming or very high, listen, your wealth index grows faster and you can easily get back to your feet even when your business crashes. Let me explain to you what I mean. There is a way, there is a way there can be so much demand on your product that even if you mess up, the demand is too high that you become too big to fail. Are you getting what I'm saying? Absolutely. Look at this. How many days did fuel go off in Nigeria? I mean, I know there are still, there's still pieces of scarcity, but remember the time when all the marketers went? Within 72 hours, Nigeria lost billions. It literally crippled them because of the huge demand for energy. Is that true? Huge demand for energy. There are certain values that when you provide, it becomes almost, humanly speaking, impossible to fail. Because the demand is, is, is overwhelming. Pure water. Pure water will never fail in Nigeria till Jesus comes. For as long as there is sun, there will be need for it. We drink water like camels in Nigeria. You finish one bag of have you seen people take water somebody will just take and hold one and squeeze it like an orange take another one take another one that's money going five five naira or ten naira if it's cold right and 50 naira just disappeared right now bam, 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 bam. and the person selling it is smiling and the person consuming it is paying every day you must bath at least i believe yes you should bath i'm speaking to the wider audience not just you there are thousands of people full right so the demand for soap will never stop and the demand is so high every day somebody's birthday photographers will never run out are you getting me restaurants will never pack out if they pack out is a demonic thing because you are supposed to eat normally three times a day. If you are busy or you don't have money at least once. If you are fasting, that's alright. Praise God. I'm showing you that so many people are poor. Because they have not responded to demands. Those who have responded to the demands are the ones who are rich. Because you will pay for anything you cannot do for yourself. It's a law. Whatever you cannot do. Guys keep paying in the restaurant every day because they cannot do it for themselves.
Always write this down, please. Let's hurry up. Always be absolutely sure that there is sufficient and sustainable demand for the value or service you wish to provide before working on providing it. I repeat. Always be absolutely sure that there is sufficient and sustainable demand for the value or service you wish to provide before working on providing it. Never get to do something without ascertaining that there will be consistent and sustainable demand for it. The amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to number one, the demand. The demand. Watch this. Let me bring it to ministry so that you will understand. Watch this. As a man of God, do you know the reason why the healing and miracle ministries have crowds and inevitably have finances and the rest? Because there is a high demand for that grace. Are you getting me? There is a high demand. Usually the largest crowds come during the miracle service. There are people who because of distance cannot come for every service. But during the miracle service they will pay the price and come. Hallelujah. Because there is a demand. So if the demand for this anointing continues, Koinonia will only keep getting higher and higher. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Is there a demand for what you do? Or are you just doing it? Have you ascertained that there is a demand? The office where you are working is one thing for you to be employed, but it's another thing for the service you are receiving to be needed. Never try to answer a question nobody is asking. The second point, your ability to do what you do. We said the amount of money you receive will be in exact proportion to your ability, your skill, your expertise. Ability and skill and expertise is how you become a leader and a pace setter in what you currently do. Skill and ability. There is a direct relationship between skill and financial abundance. Please never forget this. There is a direct relationship between skill, between expertise, between competence and proficiency and financial abundance. It's not enough to be anointed. It's not enough to have something to say or just to talk. There must be skill. There must be skill. You are enjoying what he's playing because although we're in a spiritual house, there is skill. You see that? I'm preaching. You think I'm just talking until I break down the psychological implication of the things I'm saying. And you see all the things that are interplaying. In the midst of my sermon, you are laughing. In the midst of my sermon, I'm rebuking you. In the midst of my sermon, I'm challenging you. All of this requires skill. It's not just anointing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your ability to do what you do. I love how some people that peel orange. Have you seen those people that sell orange? They are so flawless. You bring orange to them and you see them talking. They are just talking and peeling it. When you see a master do something, it becomes flawless. That's how you must be if you want to be rich. Don't think rich people are dafts. Rich people are highly skilled people in the area where they function. Those who are promoted in every organization are those who are skilled. Many believers do not pay attention to skill and expertise. We pray in tongues. We fast. But organize any program for capacity building and see people reject it. They think it's carnal. They think it's not spiritual. So the man sets up the church and he does not know how to speak to people. You enter the presence of rich people and you don't know the skill to communicate to them. And so they throw you out of that place. You speak to business people and you don't have the skill to talk to them. Ministry is not about preaching and throwing people on the ground. There is a lot of skill and proficiency to it. If you think it's so easy, try it. 
and you will be shocked that you'll be saying what everybody should laugh and they'll be looking at you with anger that's when you won't know what to say again you will know that it's not just about cracking jokes there is a skill not just a spirit the bible says and david led the people with the integrity of heart and the skillfulness of hands david did not throw goliath just through the anointing it took skill the benjamites theologically speaking they were so skilled in throwing slings that they could diverge arrows in other words you could shoot an arrow and they will use a sling and diverge it they were that skilled so don't you think god just came upon this guy samson was not just anointed alone he was skilled bezalel have you read about bezalel the spirit of creativity and excellence came upon him the three hebrew boys the bible says and in all the matters that they were tested in they were found ten times better how many times in what you do do you have ability or just desire you set up a restaurant, nobody likes your food. Something is wrong. There is a demand for it, but there is no skill. And you think it's demons. You are fasting and running around your parlor, whereas you should go and settle down and meet a caterer, not a mediocre. A caterer. Buy the truth. It will cost you. Buy the truth. Wealthy people are the ones who can pay one million naira to bring a mentor into their lives to teach them something you would think it's a waste you are paying somebody one million just to talk to you but they value it that much how many believers can pay for knowledge they don't want to they just want to receive average and so they remain mediocre it's god speaking to us it takes skill what he's playing he didn't just learn it by the anointing an anointing came upon his skill the fire will never fall until there is a sacrifice what skill are you lifting up to god to anoint he said he will anoint the works of your hands i'm not just talking of business i'm talking of skillful business see yet thou a man diligent 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 skillful many preachers are not skillful many business people are not skillful many employers and employees are not skillful skill is not just an impartation it is learned it is learned it will cost you you will sit at the feet of uncommon mentors to learn but are you willing everybody say ability i made a vow in my life that everything every service and every value i want to offer my generation i will be a master in it let me tell you as you see me like this don't don't let these suits and all these things deceive you i'm such a workaholic you would not like my life you will like me when you see me on suit standing if you come close to me you will run away from me because my life is irritating there's no room for laziness whatsoever there are things I do every day no matter how much I'm tired. Do you think preparing for this, you don't want to know how many books were read. You don't know how many books I read, how many materials I consult to just bring one message. One message that you just hear for two hours. You don't become wealthy when you are lazy if you must bring facts. How many videos I've downloaded on YouTube listen to them in fasting and prayer converted them to mp3s to listen to them listen to three hours six hours videos and summarize them in major points work on them edit the part of them that is unscriptural and add a scriptural touch to it that's hard work brother and all that is for one sermon that you just receive and say wow the sermon is impressive are you getting what i'm saying I returned back. We, I, we went to Bida on Saturday. And then on Sunday I was there. On Monday, Tuesday, I passed through Abuja to Kogi State to go and greet the family of, of our dear one who transited. And from there I returned. The school of ministry students were there. I think it was, was it yesterday, right? I returned. As I returned, I just went to take my bath. 
and rush. We were here having lectures from 6 to about past 10. I had barely rested when I got up and then I had to plan, do a lot of things, had to run to town, see a few people this afternoon, I am here. First thing tomorrow morning, I'm off to Kaduna. We have a meeting in Kaduna. From Kaduna, we're passing straight to Kano for an evening meeting. Sunday, we're back, 3 o'clock on the dot. There is lecture, school of ministry. Monday, there is counseling from morning till night. And next week is my birthday. Hello? Don't you ever... Hold on, don't... Talk, we'll talk about birthday after the service. If you ever think wealthy people do not deserve their money, change your mind tonight. You don't know how hard they work. There are people, 6 o'clock, their shops are open. They close past 12. There are others who open to 12 and they close to 7. Skill. Diligence. You get up and you say you are a motivational speaker and they ask you what is success say, according to brian tracy according to you what is it you get up and you are a preacher and all you are doing is copying and pasting messages as you are preaching they'll help you complete it and tell you where you got the sermon from and they will tell you the site you downloaded no originality it takes skill you think it's easy to to buttress points i can Communicate any point and sing a song to support it. Listen, it's not just anointing, it is skill. Right? You know how many things the worship team people don't eat to sing well? You just know every time you hear them, you are kneeling down. Find out how many things are out of bounds for them. Things they love so much. He that desires mastery is temperate in all things. What are you willing to give up to be skillful? Don't just say, ah, apostle is blessed. Guy, koinonia, is lucky. Oh. Wait until you see our leadership trainings. Wait and see the, 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 the workshops and the retreats that we have for our leaders. Wait and see the way we build them. You come and see the, the various departments. You think these guys are just standing by default? Look at the ushers standing and positioned. They have been trained to be sensitive to the anointing. Go for a meeting somewhere and see how people break chairs and wound themselves. But you, before you get to the ground, somebody has come to hold you. It's a skill. Because they are holding people who are bigger than them. There is a skill. We are that meticulous. So don't just say God is prospering koinonia. We are blessed. We are blessed through skill. Hallelujah. Let's hurry up so we can stop somewhere. Skill and expertise is the, key, is the key to promotion and increased salary. You see somebody who has been grumbling and hating his boss, tell him be skillful. Be skillful then you can pray. Stop drumming at the gates of heaven when you are not skillful. Let me tell you something. I humorously tell people, if I'm your boss and you are not skillful, I can be a good pastor to you, but I'll fire you. And I'll fire you because I'm a serious Christian. Hallelujah. I will never entertain a worker in church, for instance. I mean, maybe there is, I'm, I'm your boss in an office somewhere, and you think because we are members of Koinonia, you are not serious, you will never get the job. Never get the job. I don't do all those kinds of things. Say, remember, we are from the same place. Whether we are from the same room, if you have not demonstrated the skill, if you are so much of a liability for me, I will bless you with direct money so that you will go, but not to commit things to you. He gave unto some five, some two, and one according to their several ability, not their prayer request, their ability. Their ability. I hammer it on the workers to be skillful. And it's my desire to see everybody who is at the sound of my voice. You must become skillful at something. You must become an expert in something. You can't become jack of all trades and master of none. You have to lay your hands on something. Be a master in it. And I guarantee you, you're on your way to the wealthy place. You see the implication of the formula you were just jumping around on? Demand for your service 
is not enough. You must have both the psychological and intellectual know-how to satisfy that demand. Write it down. Demand for your service is not enough. You must have both the psychological and intellectual know-how to satisfy the demand. The person who babs me is here in Koinonia. He is so skillful. I love him so much and he babs me. No matter how you love me, I will not submit my head to you to play around with. I don't have that luxury. I love you. I can, I can, I can help you. I can teach you. But I won't do that. How many people are not skillful in what they do? We are prayerful, but we are not skillful. Say, I receive grace to be skillful. Let me tell you the truth. Skill is an asset. Skill is an asset. If this guy is so broke, if he is so broke today that nothing moves, all he needs to do is go to a hotel in Abuja, just ask for permission to sit somewhere, and then he will begin to play. And someone will see him and say, can you come and play for one program? What's your cost? And he uses other psychological factors and walks his way out of poverty forever because of skill. The next level of your life is at the mercy of your skill. Not at the mercy of God alone. At the mercy of your skill. Man of God, your preaching skill will determine the next level of ministry. Your leadership skill your financial intelligence what you are receiving right now there are people standing outside no seats for them there are people looking through the window they are passionate to receive that skill and i guarantee you in a short time their lives will show meditate on these things the bible says give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all there is nothing as lovely as an anointed person who is skillful it's a combination of grace and power anointed and skillful not only that you are anointed to sing you know the rudiments of music that will make you exceptional you are a businessman you are not just a businessman offering services you are exceptionally skilled when your contemporaries look at you they name you after your competence you work in your office and they give you a name that is synonymous to skill even your enemies will recommend you and say please promote this guy we hate him but there is nobody in this company who can do it as him i gave you a story of somebody in this country he works three jobs three jobs and he works only three times in a week he's so skillful he's the brain behind many successful companies in nigeria I will not mention the names of the companies. You will be surprised. They beg him. He works only three times. Three times in a week. And the minimum salary he gets for every one of those jobs is 500,000. Minimum. And he works only three times. Skill will defy race. Skill will defy gender. Skill will defy age. If you are skillful, the world will honor you. That's why Wole Soinka received the Nobel Prize. Nobody said you are from Africa. That's why Zuckerberg at 30 or 31 is still among the world's richest people. Skill defies age. I'm giving you a key. If you sit down in mediocrity, you will beg for bread. I choose to be skillful. In every area, I choose to be exceptional. I avoid premature manifestation. While others are running, let them run. I will stay back and I will sharpen the knife. You are a drummer, be skillful. I've hammered on these guys. You don't want to know how skillful these guys are. I've seen their diligence. Our technical people, we emphasize skill. Not just anointing brothers and sisters. It takes skill. It takes skill. It takes skill. The difference between CNN or BBC and one Christian channel around that looks as if the television is not working well is skill. It's not anointing. You watch some channels and you are angry. You are angry 
did they have to do it this way they want cheap labor rather than going to call a media consultant and pay him to produce something that is world class and coordinate this they refuse they say there's one brother who offered to help us and they remain in mediocrity to their detriment powerful message from the throne but nobody can listen many people try to write books and they don't consult with people they bring out a book that is the message is deep but the skill the artistry in writing it is not there td jakes wrote one skillful book woman thou art loose and he made four million dollars from one book four million dollars multiply that by 210 and it will give you the naira equivalent one man's skill build him out of poverty one skill you have written 10 books nobody even knows because you wrote every you wrote like you are talking they didn't teach you that there is a skill you stood somewhere and you sang a song and the people in the program vowed that they would never bring you for that meeting again were they blessed yes were they embarrassed yes why you had anointing without skill you had access to cook for a millionaire you would have been his personal chef you blew that moment you were praying in tongues in the kitchen but there was no skill the food burned everything went wrong skill papa adeboe said this himself he said when the redeemed campground started he said that they they paid very little attention to the aesthetics of the place they were more focused on the spiritual impact so people would come ceos managers billionaires will come and sit down and heat will will disturb them and it was making everything uncomfortable and god spoke to him and he said a ceo has ac in his office in his jeep he has ac in his parlor bedroom kitchen everywhere there is ac and then he comes to a very established ministry like that and heat is destroying him and he said they started making plans to add to the aesthetics of the place skill 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 let me talk on the last point and then we'll find somewhere to stop skill is an asset it has rewarded me i have seen the fruit of skill in my life i have seen it exceptionally as i travel to go for meetings i not only see the beauty of anointing i see the excellency of being skillful the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word. Skillfully dividing it. When I go for meetings, we go together with the protocol and the worship people. And I watch them as they look at me. When they say, let's now welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. And people are clapping. I'm happy because I have the skill. There's nothing you can do about it. I have it. I paid the price and God gave it. I am grateful, but I'm not apologetic about it. I know the people are going to be wow. Just give me 10 minutes of audience and I will shock you. That's all I need. And when I pick up the mic, I know what to do. With wise counsel, make war. I know that at the end of that meeting, somebody will invite me again. It's not pride. It's the truth. You can be that confident. Skill. Please, when you go back home throughout this week, some of you, as you go home, just sit down and think of your life. Please, don't be in a hurry to sleep. You've been sleeping for years. Wake up this night and think. And say, look at how I've been playing with the opportunities God has been giving. Everything you do, nobody demands what you do again because you are not skillful. They ask you to supply clothes. You supplied nonsense. You packaged it in a rubbish way. You delivered it in, in an unintelligent and unprofessional way. And they vowed not to give you that opportunity again. We're on our way to better days. Now you can sing the song well. We're on our way to better days. It's not just a song. I'm on my way to better days. Hallelujah. Yesterday when I was coming from Abuja, a woman met me. And then when she met me, she wanted me to talk to her on some things. I spoke to her on a few things. And when I was talking to her, this woman was looking at me. And she said, what kind of human being are you? Where are you getting this? 
and I was on my way going. I said on my way, I'm on my way rushing. And she said, please, can you give me a minute? And she ran to her room. And this woman brought out an envelope with dollars and said, take. I said, no, 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 no. what is this? Please, no, no, I'm not, I'm not ready. And she squeezed it into somebody. And I said, this is somebody's salary for how many months? The gift of a man, the skill of a man. I don't talk too much about my private life, but I just want to challenge you a bit. It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with gender. Are you getting what I'm saying? I hardly buy things for myself. People bring it in honor. Skill. Do you know that your skill can take you out from where you are and bail you? Yes, you may be born in Nazareth, but don't die in Nazareth. You may be born in Nazareth. God is speaking to someone here. They think you are a non-entity, but may your skill prove them wrong. May your exceptional qualities prove them wrong. Number three, the difficulty in replacing you. Write this word down. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. Write this down. When your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage, whatever you want to call it, when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage stands you out, such that it becomes very difficult right when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage stands you out such that it becomes very difficult to find a worthy alternative to you you will be very wealthy yeah you will when your uniqueness or your strategy, or as we call it in the business world, your competitive advantage, when it is so unique that it stands you out. You can get another Joshua Selman, but not easily. See that? There are many preachers, but there is only one Joshua Selman. There are many anointed men, but there is one Joshua Selman. No man can clone the grace. No man can, close the, can clone the skill. No man can clone the uniqueness. So you carve a niche that is free of competition. You carve a niche that is free of intimidation. You stand in a place where you are secured in your uniqueness. Because it's not easy to find a replacement. If you are easily replaceable, it's a sign that you will be broke. Let me tell you how you know you are not valued. Your absence is easily forgotten and ignored. When your absence is easily forgotten, when your absence is unnoticed, it's a sign that your impact is small. Yeah. If I come to work in your company, even if it is one day, I will do something that will make you chase me like your life depends on it. It's called value. The amount of money that comes to you is dependent on the difficulty in finding an alternative to you. When there is no alternative to you, they will pay whatever price. You will name your price. You will name your price. Hallelujah. I have taught people these things. It's difficult to get another mic. These guys are all skillful. It's difficult to get another Elijah. It's difficult to get them. No, they are all unique. David Dam is here. Come. All these guys you see, they are skilled people, but they have their uniqueness. There is a way David Dam is so unique, you cannot clone him, no matter what happens. There is a way Sam comes on stage, and you know he's in a class of his own. What do you have in your life that truthfully you can say, when it comes to this, God has put me in a class? Void of competition. Some of you, it's only trouble that you are in a class of your own. 
gossiping, all these bad, bad things that are bad, bad qualities. That's what you are in the class of your mother. Tonight, change. Everybody is selling. But there is a way you do yours. The day you don't open your shop, people come and there are five shops open, but they are waiting for you. They say, Abba, can't you buy? I say, there is, I like that smile. There is a unique touch to what you do. There is a way you do what you do. You are the happiest staff in your corporation. The day you don't come, the entire workforce is gloomy. They are, they are sad. They miss you. Some of you, nobody is missing you right now. It's bad. It's bad. It's a serious issue. Think about it. Nobody is missing what you are giving. ATC called me this morning and they said they wanted to do a novelty football match in honor of my birthday. They said they want to play a football match with Koinonia to honor me on my birthday. I said, wow, that's so touching. Who would do it for you and when? It's a serious question. I'm not intimidating you. Who has chosen to go out of his way to do something for you? You are saying there is no money. There are people they are chasing with money. People bless me every day. I say it in, with all humility. It's not because I'm Joshua Selman. When you are not easily replaceable, you become an asset even to your enemies because they need you to remain in business. They need your news to remain relevant. Even your enemies desire you to continue. Are you that unique? Or you are just general? I'm a general businessman general talkative what do you sell television what is unique about why should i come and buy tv from you and not from someone else do you have that uniqueness what do you do i plot who have you plotted many people what is your uniqueness is it that you plot on time is it that you plot well is it that the lady's hair will not pain her when you plot what is your uniqueness I refuse to be easily replaceable. I refuse it. Pray that prayer in one minute. I refuse it. Please pray. I'm showing you a key. We're not done yet. But I just want you to pray it. And then we'll do an evaluation quickly and we're out. Pray. They have belittled you because you are easily replaceable. You have refused to work on yourself. Money is available, I tell you. Money is available. The millions are available. You are not yet unique enough to be rich. You have not qualified for the world. You are grumbling about it. You are complaining. For five years, you are still at that lower level. Somebody came, a fresh graduate. You paid his school fees. He's now your boss. To what degree are you easily replaceable? Pray. Lord, may I be so unique that I become an asset, an asset to all and sundry. May my absence create a vacuum that cannot be easily filled. I'm ready to pay the price to be that unique, world class, not a local champion. You may start small, but you hold on to strong convictions. Convictions that nothing will bend. Not cultural barriers. Convictions that nothing will bend. Not the limitations of your past. Convictions that nothing will bend. Pray. An award-winning banker. Exceptional. An award-winning CEO. An award-winning man of God. So anointed so unique you become a standard you become a leader you become a reference it's not a gift it's a reward it's not a gift hallelujah do this and in one day you will get what somebody will get in a lifetime Somebody who earns 100,000 per month. How much is that per year? How much is that per year? 1.2 million. How much is that in 20 years? 
24 million someone can give it to you in one day as a reward to your uniqueness the lifetime one day my father looked at me and said you are an old man you are a young man with gray hair what sort of person are you may people look at you like jesus and say what wisdom is this they look at you and wonder they don't know what to say about you let me tell you something stop responding to your critics the only response you give your critics is greater results greater results let them keep talking the gap will be too wide they will be forced to shut up continue moving let me tell you what you are seeing in ministry right now the level of excellence and the anointing is my preparation of yesterday tomorrow will show you what i'm doing today in my mind i've left this level no i've left this level i've left this level gentiles this is what will make gentiles come to your light and kings to their brightness millionaires will come and they will queue up they will queue up one woman asked me a question she said my son how come people come for counseling hundreds of people and they sit down from morning till night just to talk to you for two minutes and five minutes i didn't know what to tell her i said it's the same reason why a baba or a rich man will run backward to see a herbalist and the herbalist said turn back and he will turn back he knows what he's looking for when you hold the keys to the door they will look for you they will beg for you they will pay you to open the door oh i found my way out of poverty i found my way out i found my way out there is an eternal demand for what i do i will never run out of relevance there is an eternal demand for as long as there is one soul that is not yet saved there is a demand for as long as there is one sick body that is not healed there is a demand for as long as there is one person one family under oppression i will be needed for as long as there are people who need to be taught the principles of the kingdom i will be needed the, the, we are an endangered species a million of me is still not enough to fulfill the demand you say you are a leader how uncommon are you one time I went to speak in a, a, a small business leadership conference and I sat quietly. There were bank managers and people. Everybody came and was just bragging and talking stories and speaking rubbish. I was very disappointed in all humility because I had high expectations for them. I didn't know how much I had worked on myself. They spoke and everybody spoke nonsense. And I came out. When I spoke, brothers and sisters, I tell you the truth and I, I lie not. I do not know how many complimentary cards and all of that and all of that and they were talking and I looked. I said on a good day I will go to their offices and they will drive me out. Now they are following me with complimentary cards. Stop following success. Attract it through your diligence. Stop chasing money. Attract it through your skill. Stop chasing money. Pay the price and you will drive it away and it will refuse to go. It is for this very reason that doctors, lawyers, engineers, soldiers are very rich. This very reason. Those we call professionals. This is why. Because of um, they are, the kind of work they do requires a lot of skill. Right? Their professions require a lot of skill. That cannot be learned informally and then they require public licensing and authorizations to function so it limits the number of people that can imitate them that's why they are rich if you've ever wondered why doctors are rich engineers architects and all of the people that do what we call professional courses is because there are licenses and to get the licenses and authorizations you need to pass through something and not everybody can do that so they are few and the demand for what they have is so high and they can set any price any price may you be so powerful that you can name your price and people will still pay you and say thank you for helping us the same way you queue in a filling station 
you are going to use your money to pay for the fuel but you will say thank you because it's so much in demand there is none of you under the sound of my voice who will walk what i'm telling you and will not be rich no not one write a few things down we're rounding up number one you do not seek money directly write this point it's wrong i'm looking for money is an error you will never find it it's not missing You don't look for money directly. Money, like health and happiness, is an effect. It's a byproduct. You don't look for it directly. You don't look for happiness directly. You look for the things that bring happiness. Right? You don't look for health directly. You eat well and it produces health. So you don't look for money directly. Money is an effect responding to a cause. Money is a byproduct. Of carrying out a formula stop looking for money you attract it I'm looking for money you will never find it never find it you may not like me tonight but you will tell me thank you tomorrow when you become a billionaire and your colleagues look at you and say Hapa, didn't we school together you say but we didn't hear the same thing hallelujah You only set it as a goal and then you seek to provide services and solutions to increase your skill and bring it into your life. I'm summarizing to you right now. Two ways you get rich. Number one, you get rich by increasing or improving the service that you offer. You need to sit down and birth ideas for bigger services. What is a better way to do this? You need strategies. So I'm still buttressing on the first point. You need to increase the services. Whatever it is that you render. I'm telling you the truth. Repent of that cause for that, that thinking and that ideology of trying to get something for nothing. Listen. You can come and meet me today. You can tell me your problems. I can talk to you. And I can pray with you. There may be financial problems. I will look at you. I may give you minerals or malt or apples or whatever. And tell you God bless you. But I will be willing to carry one million. And give somebody who can solve my problem. I was always willing to give. You were not willing to receive. Are you getting that? Many people. You come to many people's houses to beg for money. They will not give you money. But they will carry 1.5 on their way to the bank on Monday and deposit it. The money is always there. You don't get it by begging. You get it by offering service. If you solve a millionaire's problem, you have access to his millions. Valuable service will give you the keys to the wealth of people. I have met billionaires. I have met millionaires. I'm shocked and surprised to see the way they honor me and respect me and respect koinonia there is a woman she's a billionaire she jogs with koinonia messages every day she's passionate about me i was with her yesterday and i was amazed do you know how valuable you can be the people you are admiring today will admire you if you do what i'm telling you to do they will admire you there are people who i used to call sir before Today, I've met them. I still recognize them, but they don't recognize me. Many of the people who criticized me in the past have come for counseling today. And they never knew that I was the one they were criticizing. They came and waited for hours. And when they entered, I said, man of God, it's a privilege. I've been hearing about you. And like Joseph, I said, God bless you. How can I help you? And they say everything there. Many of them criticized and said all kinds of things. But their children recommended them to come. And now they keep, they are now seeing the Son of Man in power and glory. Oh, then he was a shepherd boy in Nazareth. Why will you remain this way after this teaching? I will weep 
you saw me sit, I sat down here and I was, I was almost, almost shedding tears, honestly. I'm not an emotional person at all, but there is a very soft side to me. Because when I sat down, I was praying while the worship team was ministering. I said, Lord, will your people respect what I will tell them? Or must they suffer to a point that their lives are almost becoming miserable before they receive it? Many of you are doing well. Parents are helping you. You are not taking care of your finances. And so you may have very little value for what I'm sharing. Until the day you get married. And you find out that you are the one who is the breadwinner. That's when you go and check the dictionary and find out the meaning of the word breadwinner. It means the absolute provider. Unassisted. Absolute provider. And then you will now review this message again. But the earlier you start, the faster for you. Hallelujah. The earlier you start, the faster for you. And then you increase your skill. I told you, you get rich by increasing your service and then you increase your skill in what you currently do. Even if it's to get a job, There's part three of this. And in that one, I'll be teaching you multiple streams of income. I'll be teaching you certain things. The ocean never dries because every stream flows to it. Hmm. I will show you the mystery of Genesis chapter one. The secret of unlimited abundance. And there was a river that went out of Eden and parted itself into four. I'll be teaching you multiple streams of income. The key to oceanic wealth. The very key. Ordinarily, I'm supposed to stop here. But then we'll go the extra mile. Because I hope that this becomes my contribution to your finances. That what our parents did not get, we are getting. So that you are not without any excuse. Then you can see that your status is changing. It no longer will become a cliche. You become magnetic. Absolutely magnetic. It will look like a charm. But money will look for you wherever you go. Personal evaluation. Write this. This is an evaluation for you to go and work on. Just three questions I'm about to ask you. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I'll give you five. Ready? Number one. Just write personal evaluations. These are questions that you answer. We're out of time so that we can pray. Sorry we are taking a bit of time, but I think this is, this is worth it, right? Number one, what are the major solutions or value or service I provide? That's the first question you are going to ask yourself. Write it down. Be absolutely clear about it. What are the major solutions? What is the major value what are the major services that I provide as a person? As a man of God, I provide spiritual solutions, for instance. That's what I do. As a man of God, I, I'm not just a preacher. I provide spiritual solutions. Right? And I know the exact solutions I provide. I'm bringing people to the point of intimacy and passion for God. That's a spiritual solution. Right? I'm helping them to comprehend the principles of the kingdom. I'm offering spiritual solutions using the word of God and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's the value that I'm giving to you. So I'm a businessman. This is my product. I'm giving you valuable service. A spiritual solution. I'm connecting you. I'm bringing you to closer intimacy with God. And I'm teaching you the principles of the kingdom that guarantee for a victorious life and a purposeful life. That's value I'm adding to you. And then I'm, I'm solving solutions. I, I mean, I'm providing solutions and solving problems supernaturally. On Friday is going to be miracle service. Another reign of miracles and the anointing of the spirit. That's a spiritual solution. There are people who are coming barren. I spoke to a woman. Eight years barren. Next week she's coming and her, her problem will end. That's a spiritual solution. Somebody is coming who has been buffeted by darkness. And light will come. Spiritual solution. This is why I will remain blessed. It's not because I'm preaching the gospel. It's because I'm giving something. Are you seeing that now? This is why preachers are rich. This is why preachers are rich. 
I refuse to celebrate my birthday. Many people have been asking, why don't you celebrate your birthday? I will celebrate my birthday. Birthday is not the day you were born. It's a celebration of the reason why you were born. I will begin to celebrate my birthday when I feel satisfied that I'm truly impacting lives. It's not just about cutting cake and smiling. It's about many people saying, thank God you were born. Then you can celebrate it indeed. Question two. Is there a demand for the solution I am providing? Question. So question one, what is the value? What are you providing? If you are working in an office, what are you giving? Really? What are they paying you for? You must know it. Don't just say they are paying me 10,000. No. If you know what they are paying you for, you can increase your salary by increasing what they are paying you for. You don't increase your salary by going to your director and say, increase my pay. No. When you increase your skill, your service, you are paid. Number two, is there a demand for the solutions I'm providing? Still on number two. If yes, how great and sustainable is that demand? Meaning what you are providing, whether as an employer, as a businessman, as an entrepreneur, as a leader, as a man of God, whatever it is. Is there a demand for what you are providing? And if yes, how sustainable is that demand? Will it fade with time? There is no amount of civilization that will make what I'm doing go extinct. I'm so happy for being a pastor. I'm so happy for being a preacher. I'm so happy for being a man of God. Because the more civilization comes, the more we are needed. You will never kick us out. We have come to stay. Praise the Lord. Doctors will never go out of extinct because darkness will cover the earth. People will be sick. Women are getting pregnant every day. Women are giving birth every day. Somebody is having a headache. Somebody is breaking the laws of health every day. The disobedience of men will keep medicine alive until Jesus comes. The military will keep reigning. Wicked people will continue. Careless people will continue. And so the military will never go out. Is there a demand for what you have to offer? And if there is, how sustainable is it? So that you know whether you should build your life around it or stop wasting your time. It is painful to build your life around a service and then it no longer becomes needed. And you are left there despondent. Number three. Do I possess all the skill and expertise required in providing the above solutions? Okay, so it is true now that you have identified what you are doing. The service, the valuable service. Right? And you have seen that there is a demand. The third question is, do I possess all the skill required in providing the above solutions? You can put in bracket, am I aware of all the skills required in the first place? You are a preacher. Are you aware of all the skills required in preaching well? Or you are just carrying the mic and moving around? Are you aware? And if you are aware, have you cultivated them? As a businessman, have you cultivated your communication skills, your people skills, your leadership skills? Right? Have you mastered goal setting? Have you mastered the principles of execution? Have you learned how to coordinate people? Have you learned how to develop a team spirit in people? Have you learned how to motivate people to achieve a common goal? Have you learned that? Do you have financial intelligence? What do you understand about accounting and documentation and auditing? Have you gone that far to know anything about it? Have you learned how to, to motivate people when they do not have courage? Or are you just a businessman, a CEO, moving around with complimentary cards, packaging with no content? As an employee, are you so skilled? Are you so skilled? Do you know your onions well? Can you do your stuff so well? Number four. Number four. Write two things, just two. Write two things that you can do daily be, to become exceptional in your field. Two things. Write two things. There are many things you can do. 
but write two things what two things can you do daily from this night to start improving yourself in the area where you see god taking you to if it's as a man of god what two things will you do every day as a businessman what two things would you do every day as an entrepreneur as a leader right what two things do you think you can do every day to improve on yourself five write down three major ideas that have come to your mind and you think will be in high demand write three ideas there must have been ideas in your mind especially when you were growing up before you were aware of wickedness before you were aware of the vicissitudes of life that kill the dreams of people write down these three ideas that you have so passionately pursued in your life that you so passionately desire and you know they will be in high demand ministerially entrepreneurial and all of that write it and then pick one of them just one and start working on it ideas are like a vehicle you can only get to one location at a time you can go everywhere with it but not everywhere at a time pick one 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 and start working on it. many of us are doing too many things that's why you don't succeed too many things after the miracle service i'm going to be teaching us on the principle of execution it will be the last phase and then i'll also teach us on multiple streams of income i'm going to be sharing you a lot of with you a lot of things please make sure that you invite people the miracle service this weekend is going to be an unusual one hallelujah it's going to be characterized by a heavy outpouring of miracles and breakthrough for people praise the lord rise up on your feet everyone Please rise up on your feet. We're out of time. I'm on my way to better days. Just sing it three times and we pray. I'm on my way to better days. Yes, you really are. I'm on my way to better days. points lift your voice and thank the lord for this information tonight lift your voice and thank the lord for this information you only arise and shine to the degree to which your light comes you only arise and shine to the degree to which your light comes and the degree to which the glory of the lord is risen upon you gentiles will come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising your gates will be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and enjoy your many generations. Pray and thank God for this information. Lord, I give you praise. I give you praise for the mental revolution. I give you praise for the equipping. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two cry for grace to take action based on this truth they had the word just like we did but the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith pray you have gotten some of the keys believe me what you have had tonight is not elementary at all at all this is the secret of winners pray it's the secret of the wealthy So God to put it to action. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Let's add one more prayer point. Lord, there must be a performance in my life. My eyes will see it and my hands will handle it. Pray. Lord, my ears have heard it, but my eyes will see it and my hands will handle it. Are you praying, Koinonia? My ears have heard this truth, but Lord, my eyes will see it and my hands will handle it. Lift your hands and I pray for you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Let this teaching birth a financial revolution among your people. In the name of Jesus, raise millionaires from this teaching for the kingdom. Raise billionaires for the, from this teaching for the kingdom. Change the financial status of men. In the name of Jesus, let this truth crumble every financial limitation let this truth take you from a beggarly realm to a realm where you become a blessing that your life will fulfill the blessing of abraham that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed in the name of jesus christ very quickly you are here for the first time you are invited or you came here tonight please keep standing thank you so much for making our time to come wherever you are Please, I'd like you to walk to the front. We honor you. We love you. We just want to recognize you and bless you. Wherever you are, inside or outside, no matter how far, please make your way to the front. There is a blessing and a prophecy for you. God bless you. Koinonia, celebrate them. Come on. Thank you. Thank you for coming. God bless you. We have a prayer and a prophecy for you. Just make your way as fast as you can to the front. Make your way as fast as you can to the front. Thank you. Thank you. We honor you. We thank you for coming. We bless you. We bless you for coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia. We thank our mothers. We thank all the elderly ones who have come to worship with us. We thank you. We love you. We truly, truly cherish and celebrate you. This is Koinonia. A meeting put together by Eternity Network International. We are here every Fridays. Next Friday is our miracle service. Please and please as much as possible. Don't miss it. It's a time when the Lord will visit you and he'll do a lot of things. Praise the Lord. Thank you for coming. You will never be the same. We're here every Fridays and the Lord is building us. We're on our financial series and we're glad to have you be part of it. Stretch your hands, saints of God, and let's bless them. We're anointed and when we prophesy over your life, it will follow you speak blessings to them we bless you in the name of jesus we bless you with the wisdom of the spirit we bless you with passion for god we bless you we bless you may the lord honor you like jabez we declare that your coast be enlarged and you become more honorable than your brethren in the name of the lord jesus christ may the lord make you mighty may he strengthen you in the name of jesus hallelujah Thank you once again for coming. Truly, truly, I celebrate you. I love you. I cherish you. I want you to follow someone waving her hands. One of the ushers, they are waving their hands. Just follow them and they will have your details and will communicate to you more formally. God bless you and thank you very much. Celebrate them, Koinonia. believe you have been blessed by this message. For additional information, you can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash Koinonia Eternity Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash Koinonia underscore airline.